All right, team. Hey, what's up? Chuck with Traders War Room. And we're here going to do the aftermarket review for 10 May. Use stocks and charts. Let's get a plan in motion. Now, this is a free service. We're going to do this live right here. We put the recording on YouTube and you guys can watch it on YouTube and get a little reference material. But all I ask is you let me do my spiel at the beginning and then we'll get cracking. So here we go. Without further ado, let's get it started. Legal disclaimer. This is not financial advice. The content is for entertainment and education purposes only. You're responsible for every decision you make. We want you to have fun, use caution, always go to war. Some services we provide at Traders War Room, free and paid services, real-time buy and sell alerts, live trading. Guys, we got bell to bell live trading every day the market's open. Like we do one-on-one -on -one mentoring, we do classes, and we got a fantastic community. Check us out, traderswarroom.com, and the Discord is right there, right at the hyperlinks. We have 25 real-time analysts doing alerts, all kinds of styles, stocks, crypto, forex, options, long, short, day, swing, spreads, leap, you name it, we got it at Traders War Room. We also have a special going on right now, premium gold on Discord, five-day trial with a gold membership. Come get some, try us out. If you like it, you stay. If not, you go back being a free member, man. We'd love to have you on the team regardless. We also got the next class coming up 21 May. Mark your calendars. $15 a pop. It's going to be at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to go over supply and demand zones. You guys get the recording. You purchase the class, 15 bucks for the type of content that we provide as a steal. Guys, professional traders giving you professional classes, $15 a pop, and you keep the recording. Man, you can't get a better deal than that. You're going to identify supply and demand zones, enter and exit trades for consistent profits, and trading zones using various methods and techniques. You can Purchase your class right there at traderswarroom.com, upcoming classes, or you can email us at traderswarroom at gmail.com for any questions. Instant messaging platform. This is coming out on 15 May. You guys ask for less noise, more alerts. We got you covered, man. We're going to give you a platform that's only going to give you guys alerts. None of the other BS that comes along with it, man. You're just going to get straight alerts, buy and sell signals, and buy and sell feeds, and just things to make you money and grow your trading portfolio. That's it. Check the website. We're going to be marketing this hard in the next few weeks. Bottom line, we're destroying the market no matter which direction it goes. We want you to be part of the team. Join us today. Quit wasting money that doesn't make money. Invest in yourself in 2022. Do it with Traders Worm. And with that said, are you ready? I know I am. Let's get it, guys. Here we go. Start putting your tickers you want to go over in the chat group right there, and we're going to knock them out right now. <clears throat> We're going to start off with SPY because that's pretty much what everyone's into. Guys, consistency is what pays the bills around in the trading future, okay? We start out with a bird's eye view approach. Always got to look at the day first, okay? And as you see, what do we got right here? Oh, look at that. We got like a little outside bar. So this is closing tight. So basically, the meat and potatoes of where we traded here today was inside of the same thing. So we closed tight. That's a, sometimes a good, a good indicator that we potentially hit a bottom and we could see a sharp reversal. Now, SPY, if it does reverse and we start to get back into the bullish type of market that we all love, SPY is going to take off and it's going to explode. Okay, so we need to be ready for that. Also, though, we need to understand that we did hit a new yearly low, too. So we could have this what's like a megaphone. And I'm going to show you guys what I mean by this, okay? If, if we get this, this could pull like some, you know, issues in. If we get this megaphone type of thing going on, and by that, what well, here's, I'm showing you what I mean, right? So what it's doing, right, is essentially we're making higher highs, but we're making higher lows too, right? Or excuse me, lower lows. And we're getting this megaphone thing. And what this symbolizes is that eventually we're going to get to a breaking point. And normally what's associated with this is kind of a melting point. We start to spike up high and then we drop off dramatic, okay? Catch people in that bull trap, okay? So just be cautious of this. If we start to see the dramatic pushes up, but the dramatic pushes down, we might be going into this megaphone thing, okay? I would like to see some consolidation and then a break to the upside, but we'll see what happens closing out this week and what kind of momentum we have. All right, what kind of tickers we got in here? Disney, we only got one ticker, man. I got 13 people in here. Start putting your tickers in that chat group, people. Let's go, Disney. Let's get it. Here we go. Bird's eye view, right? We're looking at the daily. So Disney, we actually popped up a little bit nice, but we still closed inside of the previous ones, okay? So again, very similar to SPY, but the meat and potatoes of where we traded in actually traded higher. So I do like this for continuation. I'd like to see Disney push back up. I could see it pushing up 
probably a slow trickle given the market conditions that we have. But I could see Disney over the next week or two pushing back up in the 116s. You know, maybe, maybe if we get the volume and get some good news stories, maybe of the 119, 120, but that's pushing a little bit. But 115, 116s with some volume and some good catalysts, I could definitely see that happening. 112 is probably more realistic. So just be cautious. Right now, though, Disney, perfect for share accumulation. If you guys ever wanted to own a piece of Disney and hold it for years, this is the time to buy in because it's not going to be this low for very long. I promise you that. It might even go a little bit lower if we go into a true recession, but anything short of recession, man, it's just going to start hitting the floor here and then go up from here. So we're paying attention to it very close. Ross, what is, what's the kicker for Ross? Ross, the ticker? Ross acquisition? Who, who's drawing on my screen? Michael Warren, you're drawing on my screen. <laughs> All right, Ross. I don't know anything about Ross. Um, looks like it's consolidating, uh, consolidating hard. This is an acquisition corp, so they're a blank check company, um, kind of barcoding out. So I don't really know much about this. Looks like it's a SPAC because they're trying to keep it within that $9 and $10 range. So definitely uh, pay attention for it. And if uh, you start to see the mergers and the, uh, the news of it, these things can fly, but right now SPACs are considered speculative, so they're definitely not getting any type of longevity on them. Tesla, yeah, we talked about Tesla. Tesla just had a recall, guys, come out, okay, on some of their vehicles, so we're definitely paying attention to them. Bird's eye view approach, Tesla's low. Now, any Tesla is a fantastic stock to just trade. It's a day trader's dream, guys. Any stock that pushes 50 to $100 in a trading session, there's money to be made both ways, okay? Now, we came off of the shelf, and then we dumped down, right? We're kind of consolidating right here. I would like to have had an inside bar here, but we're not getting the inside bar. We came down a little bit lower than the previous session. So what does that tell me? It tells me that we're probably going to have some triggers. So if I were a betting man, this is how I would play Tesla. I would put a high trigger of 842, right? And I would think if we close above that on a five-minute chart, 842, we could go with calls. I would put a lower trigger at like 786. If we closed below on a five minute chart, below 789, 789, yeah, 789, I would go with some puts. And usually you can get a two leg strategy. What do I mean by two leg strategy? Well, I'll show you right here, okay? Getting your put up here, two leg strategy. Down, down and consolidate, that's one leg. Down and consolidate, that's two leg. Usually on the run, you can get a two leg strategy. Down one, down two, you're out. That's what, that's what it needs to be, okay? Being a volatile stock like Tesla, as soon as you hit these two leg strategies, things are gonna reverse on you more, more often than not. So just be cautious, okay? All right, what do we got next? Uh, NVDA, okay, NVDA. All right, NVDA, we're definitely, guys, we're getting beat up on NVDA, but look, look at what we got here, okay? We got majority of the trading in inside bar right here, okay? So we got the top and the bottom. We like NVDA, okay? This is tight consolidation. This is tight closing. Look at the majority of the trading action going in. Now today, yesterday was 64 million, right? Today, 76 million. And look at the majority of where the price action was at. It was like within, within a dollar, okay? Within a dollar was the, was the majority of the price action. So very tight closing. I think we've probably found a bottom with NVDA and we should be looking for signs for the reversal. This is uh, probably a good time to share accumulation, dollar cost average if you have shares and definitely try to get in and get your trades in. Hang on, we got a hand raised. I got you. Um, one moment. Ian, uh, go, uh, go, ahead, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Can you repeat what you said on Tesla? On Tesla? Yeah. Yep, one moment. I'll, go, I'll, I'll do Tesla here in just a second. Thank you. Yeah, and hey, Ian, thank you for um, for asking asking that question. Any of you guys got questions during this? I'll take a couple questions after the end. I don't do too many because I'm trying to keep this kind of quick. But if you got a question, we'll definitely answer it. But um, we'll do it at the end. But for you, Ian, we're going to go through Tesla again real quick. All right, Tesla, right? So when we're looking at this, you get a two-leg strategy. That's what we're talking about, off the trigger, okay? We're looking at Tesla. If I was a betting man, I would bet on Tesla being a trigger. 838, something like this. Basically, we're going at the meat and potatoes of the previous day, and we're calling that our high trigger point, right? 
Anything above that, we on closing on a five minute chart or better, five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute or better, we'll be thinking about calls, boom, to the upside. Down here, we go to the low point, right, of the meat and potatoes, 786, something like that. If we close below that on a five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute chart, something like that, we close below that, we're going puts to the downside. Usually with Tesla, you get a two leg strategy. So we get in at the, say the put, right? We hit our trigger at the put, two leg strategy. Down one, consolidate. Down two, consolidate, we're out, all right? That's the way that, that's the way you play triggers, okay? Because otherwise, if you do more than two leg strategy, you're being greedy and it's always going, Murphy's gonna come and bite you and it's gonna reverse on you and you're gonna lose all your money, okay? So two leg strategy and get out. You gotta be able to watch the stock, play the stock and watch it, all right? All right, here, we, where are we at? NVDA, we just did that, Lucid. All right, Lucid. Now, we got a, we got a $22 call out uh, pushing out into March 20th on Lucid. Now, I like Lucid. I think, uh, I think here we're kind of we're coming down, but we're getting to a point, kind of a falling wedge type pattern, right? We're getting to a point where we're starting to pick up some steam, pick up some volume, pick up some steam, and we're starting to make some difference moves, okay? Now, we did go lower, obviously. Market kind of played into that factor as well, but I do think that Lucid is very popular. We probably found a bottom, and if we can get some volume and good, and like a good relief day, if we get a good relief day, Lucid will fall into some of that, and we'll probably see some upside, and we can get out on Profitville on our call before we get expiration. I'm also considering tomorrow, depending on what happens, I'm considering averaging down on that trade, just because I do think Lucid has enough time to make up for it, and we can always get a better price. So I do like Lucid um, at these price too. This is share accumulation. If you don't have shares of Lucid and you ever wanted to own a piece of Lucid, you believe in Lucid, this is the time to buy the shares. Okay, $15 a pop, man, this is a steal, okay? Get in your shares and you hold these and you know you wait for the big payday years down the road. If you believe in them, if you got conviction for it, you gotta have conviction for the stock. All right, next one, where we're at. BA, I saw some people making some money on BA. On a, I think on the put side today, I didn't play, I haven't traded BA for a while, but um, I saw I saw people making it, which is good. All right, we're at the daily. So we're still on a downward trend. We're kind of hitting a shelf. Um, BA, BA likes to act typical, okay? BA is a stock that you can, has a lot of volume it goes into. It's very popular. Um, you can kind of, you can kind of predict it sometimes. So anything short of any dramatic move, move news from BA, We'll probably we'll probably kind of sit here all right now it had a huge day here 12 million right 11 million but there was a huge price action look at this price action 145 to like 133 so you had like a 12 dollar movement today you only you know 136 to you know about 132 four dollar movement okay means people think that this you know enough's enough okay it's at a bottom it's at a shelf all right we'll see what happens but if we get another day that closes tight like this it's probably a good time that we can think about going long on this, pushing the contract out in options two weeks, you know, two weeks to a month, you know, going at the money in the money, preferably as much as your portfolio can hold. But definitely if we close tight again, we can pretty much think that we're might be on the rounds of a reversal in a Boeing, at least going up a little bit, trying to cover some of the difference that it lost. So I am bullish on it. I think it's a good trade. I also love shares of Boeing too. Okay, Boeing's not going anywhere, all right? Boeing's a staple in, a, in our aer aeronautic and a defense contracting systems, all right? It's not going anywhere, especially with Lockheed Martin pushing up the Javelin system. If you guys haven't paid attention to Russia and Ukraine, that, that thing's still going on. And our defense contractors are getting spun up and money's flowing into them. So we need to pay attention to that. All right, here we go. Where are we at? Roast? R-O-S-T, R-O-S-T, Rost, Ro oh, Rost stores, okay, got it, um, downward trend, kind of, kind of the same, same trend that we've been seeing here, uh, let's draw it out real quick, right, here we go, so we come, we come from the downward, coming down, right, and here, and we don't have a clear bottom, now, where's our bottom previously, you broke through that support, right, so where's our next support level? So if I was a betting man, I would think we're probably pushing down a little bit further. Listen, these retail chains, they're just not doing so well, okay? They're just, they're just not doing so well. People aren't buying as, as much things right now. Money's tight. 
these people, they're, they're just not doing well. You're going to have some of the stores doing okay. You know, Amazon is still, you know, people are still buying from Amazon, Walmart, people are buying from Walmart, but what they're looking for is they're looking for one-stop shops where they can get cheap clothes, cheap food, cheap toys, cheap electronics, cheap things. Okay. Ross is just a one trick pony. And so we, they're going to suffer a little bit as the inflation rises, but so will their cost as well. So I definitely think it's coming down. I think it would be a good idea to go put, and uh, I would not be getting shares unless I was shorting the stock currently at this time. All right, next one, where are we at? MSTR, MSTR. Micro strategy, is this like a pharmaceutical company? Ooh, it's a, it's a where are we? never done this one before. This one looks good. Um, we're low. We're low. I wonder what made it uh, dump so low. Can you give me a little history on this one? Like, uh, like, uh, did it have a failed test or something like that? Is that why it's dumping so much? Because I'm looking at it like we have a previous high of, you know, like 800, almost a thousand bucks. And then we got just this downward trend and we got kind of an inverted cup and handle. See the, see the handle here, right? This consolidation and range. And then we got this inverted cup. So definitely, I think we're down here at a bottom. We're probably going to see some more consolidation potentially to another downward trend. What you got? Bitcoin on balance, it's down. Oh, okay. So this is this Bitcoin on balance sheet. Okay, so is that what micro strategy is? It's a, a Bitcoin thing. Well, then that would make sense on why this is down. If Bitcoin's down, this is gonna go down. I was just going off a of micro thinking it was a pharmaceutical company. All right, where are we at? AMD. AMD is gonna look very similar to NVDA guys. Um, so. Just understand that um, AMD is a little bit, actually is more popular than NVD, NVDA right now. NVDA is in more ETFs and more retirement um, portfolios and stuff like that. But AMD is getting a lot of steam. Um, I think we come back down to this previous level here. I think, it, I think it doesn't like this level, but I think we try to jump. We had what's called an evening star here, right? So we got our evening star right there. And usually when you get the evening star, the very next day, it does. It did exactly what it did. It's classic. So, consolidated, hit the bottom, popped up, evening star, and then came back down. We're probably going back down to test. Excuse me, to test this 84, 85 to be safe. Test this area if we can hold that support, which I, which we probably will, because AMD is extremely popular. A lot of people think this is enough. Enough's enough right here, given the potential with the chips and stuff. We'll probably shoot back up from there, but it's definitely looked like. We're cooling down a little bit to the downside. Only thing that's a saving grace is that right here. Yesterday was a huge movement, 92.83, 86.35. Today, again, trading within dollars and pennies, 89.88. So definitely closed tight, but it still had some wicking out to the upside. So we'll be paying attention to this. And we got a little bit of an inside bar, guys, a little bit, barely an inside bar. So inside bars, we, we like inside bars, this gives us trigger points. We get a trigger point here, $91, anything above 91, we're doing calls, two leg strategy. Anything below 85, 50, we're doing puts, two leg strategy. So those are your trigger points for AMD, if you guys wanna take trades on those. All right, next one, here we go. All right, we got a couple more, we got EVTL. EVTL. Vertical aerospace. Ah, oh, got the aerospace. Hey, look, aerospace is doing just like, um, just kind of like what, uh, what Boeing did. All right. So um, this is one of those stocks that looks like it's, well, how's it looked in the past? Let's look at it. It's a fairly new stock. Well, it consolidated hard. So it's probably institutional and then came out swinging. So where well, we got our high at 18. So this is a young stock. Um, Looking to, looking to trade, it's low. Uh, definitely anything in this type of range, you know, $7 to $5 on stocks that I could see it being something in the future. Aerospace is gonna be something in the future when we get the rockets up there, we get the satellites up there, you know, we get the things going on that side of the house. They're gonna get some revenue associated with that if they're still in business. This would be a time to start buying shares and just holding along, like buy the shares, dollar cost averaging, don't even look at them, just hold them for the aerospace boom that's coming here soon. SPG, here we go, SPG. Simon Property Group. 
what is this? Is this a REIT? Is this, is this a REIT type of stock? REITs are good during inflation, if that's what it is. Look at this, coming out of consolidation, boom. Nice, nice upward consolidation. Then we get the, then we get the upward momentum. We're cooling down a little bit and we're down here at the floor. We broke through a little bit of support, but we're closing tight again. And you know, this kind of makes sense. It went kind of with the market. Um, yeah, if we can hold this level, I like this to the upside. Um, you know, it has a pretty decent looking chart. I mean, it's not bad. Cool downs are healthy. You know, we met our resistance. We know where our resistance is at 172, something like that, okay? We got our, so we had our previous support, which was the consolidation line we broke through. Now we got a second level support right here, 116.76. You know, we hold this level, we'll probably bounce around between here and one and 122 a couple times. And then before we make a decision to break out or not. So definitely pay attention to it. Plug. All right, can't talk about plug unless we do charge point too. So we'll do charge point next, plug getting beat up y'all. Um, it's speculative in nature, okay? A lot of people, listen, until we until we start getting the influx from the, um, what is that called? The, um, the bill that the president's administration wants to pass, the infrastructure bill, and we start to really ramp up the EV boom so that we start to get the charging stations, the electrical grids, and all these type of things. These stocks are just speculative in nature, okay? People are not gonna go for them like they were back when they had you know, pandemic money and all that stuff that we were getting from the presidents and uh, the federal government, okay? They're just not going for them, all right? And they're just losing money. They're not they're speculative. They're not going long on these until the money starts flowing into this particular industry and that boom happens. And that won't happen until inflation is under control. So expect some more downward pressure in these names. It'll be more trickling effect. It won't be as dramatic as you saw here, but it'll be more trickling effect. And you'll have relief days, but ultimately it's going to fluctuate fluctuate between, you know, I would say probably, you know, 23, 15, maybe even a little bit lower. So here's the next bottom on it. Looking at right here, about 12, 12, $11. That's probably where we're headed down to eventually. All right, guys. Oh, I promise charge point. THPT. Same thing, guys. Same thing with charge point. Now, charge points a at, at the at the low level. I actually like it at this level. I think this is a buy uh, for shares at this level. Would not recommend uh, option contracts at this point. Not until you get like some sort of catalyst or some sort of you know boom story about EV sectors and things of that nature. Okay, that's what it needs to get the volume to the upside. Until that point, it's just going to bounce around between like a one dollar and three dollar movement. And I think it's too risky to play options about playing shares. And because, you know, you don't lose money on your shares until you actually sell. Playing shares would be a, a better deal with this particular one, given the price. All right, guys. Hey, I appreciate what you guys did. You guys came along for the journey. And just, guys, remember, um, at the Traders War Room, we're looking at the stock market like a war zone. Stocks and sectors are our battles. We go to war as a team. We want you on the team. Check us out, TradersWarRoom.com. Check us out on the Discord. Join us today. Quit wasting money. It doesn't make money. And we'll see you next time, guys. Peace. Appreciate you next, Hoff, Gino, Jarrett, Jarrett, Justin, Nathan, Sandra. Man, getting some love from you guys. Appreciate you guys. See you next time.